Okay, so let's continue the discussion. So we are in the second part of virtualization, which is virtualizing the memory. Okay. So memory is, the, is a physical uh, component. You can think of it as an array of bytes where the data code of a program or a process is placed. Okay. So again, going back as discussed in the exam, the memory virtualization takes a similar strategy known as limited direct execution okay, uh, for efficiency and control. So you have to consider two factors, uh, efficiency and control. Okay. And to be able to attain this efficiency and control, there should be some hardware support. Okay. Uh, basically, the computer will have some, if you're making COMSI 132, the main components will be the set of registers, the program counter, the, the memory, okay, the ALU. Okay? But in addition to that, okay, in order to be able to properly support uh, virtualization of memory, the hardware should include additional components like the page table, uh, TLBs to be able to speed up uh, address lookup and translation and of course the registers right so as I mentioned already in the pro programmers perspective uh, the programmer or the process sees what you call an address space a virtual address space so it is uh, the memory area that a process thinks it has access. Right? It's called the virtual address space. And each uh, location in the virtual address space is specified by a, by a virtual address. And eventually, that virtual address has to be mapped to a physical address. And actually, the data is stored in the physical address. So why do you need to provide a virtual address? To make things easier, basically. Okay? So the OS must get involved at key points to set up the hardware. Actually, during the boot up process of uh, the operating system, it actually prepares the memory subsystem to be able to support uh, virtual memory. Okay? So the OS does that during the start of the setup. Actually, your lab later will allow you to explore this. Uh, this low-level mechanisms, how the X, specifically how the x86 32-bit uh, uh, does that. Okay. So the OS must manage memory to judiciously uh, intervene. Okay. So I think we discussed this last time. So this is a C code, a high-level language, a C programming language, which uh, we have a part, actually this should be a, an initialization value here, say int x equals zero, because if you don't initialize this, the value will be some garbage, so you have to initialize this, this is a local variable, so int x equals zero. So uh, this uh, statement, this uh, function uh, uh, can be uh, described in three steps, you have the load, a data from the memory, increment it value by three and store the value back into the memory. So the load won't be this one, uh, this one, int x equals some value, and then incrementing and then by three and then moving it to this. So at the assembly language level, so let's say this is the, uh, so uh, this is the memory address. So this, again, when you see code like this, this is virtual address. Okay? When we talk about addresses now, we usually uh, specify, we usually mean virtual address. Okay? Unless we explicitly tell, I tell you that it's a physical address. So you have 1 to 8, what, so 132 minus 1 to 8, what's that? How, how many bytes? 4. That means this instruction size is, this instruction uh, occupies 4 bytes. Okay? So this is the meaning of that. So. Uh, this is an uh, ATNT syntax, okay? so this is the base address and this is the offset, okay? and then you get that and then place the value into e AX, and then increment the, va the value in the a register and then uh, move whatever is in AX, which is actually the store, to uh, the offset specified by the register EBX, uh, offset zero, base, base address and then the offset. Okay? So that's the assembly code. 
So, 135 minus 132, that is uh, 3 bytes. That means the add instruction is, that's, the add instruction here occupies 3 bytes. So, this is x86. It's a uh, CISC, meaning each instruction differ in size, unlike in uh, RISC, wherein you have a fixed size for each instruction. So, this is how it will look like. So, uh, again, the, the program will be coming from the disk and it will be loaded into the memory by the operating system and this will be the layout of the process, right? the, the address space for the process. So remember, the operating system will create a data structure called, uh, will instantiate a data structure called process control block to describe the process and within that process control block, this is a, there is a pointer to the address space of the process. This one here. Okay. So basically, the address space is you can think of it as a field in the process control block of the process. Right? You have to remember that. So what happens uh, when the operating system schedules this process to run on the CPU? It was selected. Then it will begin execution. So you have 128. Right? So notice <coughs> that the total size for the process, the total address, virtual address space is from 0 to 16 kilobytes, okay? So execute this instruction, so there will be a load, so this is the uh, memory address, okay? So uh, it will execute this instruction. So let's say this is, uh, actually it's 3000. So uh, here it should be int x equals 3000, okay? So as you can see here you have, this is the location of uh, the, value to be placed in EVX, so 3000, okay? So load uh, from address 15 KB, Santian, and then uh, then after na load sa EVX, it will fetch the next instruction, 132, execute this instruction. So this is an add instruction, there is no memory reference, it's an ALU operation, okay? And then uh, you have the next part, which is the store operation, and uh, the idea. So this is a translation process. Okay. So in the virtual address space. Okay. Now, this is how the again virtual. This is how the program or the process sees the memory. Okay. But the operating system uh, actually does not uh, uh, somehow does not do that directly. Somehow there is no direct. Uh, one is to one mapping between the virtual address and the physical address. So there is usually a relocation, right? So the OS wants to place the process somewhere in physical memory, not necessarily at address zero. But the process will still believe that it is accessing memory starting from address zero because it views that as its virtual address space, right? So this is an example of uh, a relocation, uh, arre relocation right? Now, one assumption that uh, you will see here is that the virtual address space of the process is usually smaller compared to the actual, uh, phys the actual size of the physical memory. For example, here, the actual size of the physical memory is 64 kilobytes. Whereas the address space for the process is only 16 kilobytes. So it will fit nicely within the uh, physical memory. So for example, so you have here from 0 to 16 KB, this area here is occupied by the operating system. So remember that the operating system should also be in the main memory. Actually, it is the piece of software that is always in the main memory, right? Because without it in the main memory, it can't execute, right? So usually during the initia initialization phase of the operating system, it loads itself in the usually called the high memory area or the low memory area, whichever side, and it stays there until you power off the machine, right? So as you can see here, uh, the relocation process works like this. So the operating system place this process starting at this address, as at this offset or memory location, 32 KB. Okay? So 
essentially it can actually be allocated anywhere but depending on the policy of the operating system it selected in this in this case it selected the relocation to start at this memory look physical memory location 32 kb so this is virtual memory address this is physical memory address so you have to to maintain that distinction whenever we talk about uh, memory addresses right and what is the hard how does the hardware support that relocation okay. how does the operating system the hardware actually tells ah this process should be placed here okay so there should be a base and bounds register so in addition to the general purpose registers like eax rax rbx internally although this is not used directly by the applications programmer the hardware should support a base and bounds register. Now, the base register actually uh, holds the starting address in the physical memory for the process to be relocated. So, uh, it as shown here, 32 uh, KB. Therefore, the base register should have the value 32 KB. This is at this point. And then the bounce register will tell you the limit, okay? Up to what uh, extent uh, is the allowed uh, range for the process to access, to perform load and store. If you move, if you go outside of that bound, then there will be an exception, okay? So two registers, base register, contains the starting address and then the bounce register contains the limit so it's basically 16 kilobytes okay so as you can see here uh, 32 plus 16 that will be 48 so this is the this is the entire chunk associated for this process you get the idea okay. now uh, we have what you call dynamic uh, relocation. Okay. So dynamic relocation is actually the operating uh, system that decides where in the physical memory the process should be loaded. So whenever, let's say, a, pro a new process is created, loaded from the uh, loaded from the disk, and memory is allocated for the address space of the process. Okay, uh, the way it is done is like this, okay? So, first, uh, the operating system will uh, find an area in the physical memory where to place the process, then put in the value of the base register, okay, and the bounce register, okay? And then, Whenever uh, the program begins executing, remember, the program will begin executing in its uh, virtual address space. So whenever it executes that, that virtual address space is actually converted to a physical address to get the actual data. And the conversion happens in this manner. Right? So uh, the physical address is computed as the base, the value on the base, uh, register plus the virtual address so essentially the virtual address acts like a an offset within the uh, memory the physical memory area allocated by the operating system for the process so for example uh, in this case here let's say 128 this is this is relative to this virtual address space. So the first instruction is located at 128, right? right? So when that is fetched, what happens is the value of the base register is 32 KB, right? So 32 KB plus 128, that will be the location of that instruction in the actual uh, physical memory. You get the idea? 32 KB plus 
Okay, you get the idea? And the same with uh, the value here, 3,000. Okay? So it is located at uh, memory location 15 KB in the process virtual address space. Then within this uh, physical memory, that will be 32 plus 15 KB. That will be the location of 3,000 in the physical memory. You got the idea? So that is... Uh, the purpose of uh, dynamic allocation. So, there should be a way to detect whether a process is accessing memory outside, by right? outside of its allocated area. So, there should be a check like the virtual address uh, should be greater than zero and less than bound. So, that's how is that, okay? Now, recall, uh, remember, also remember that when the process is executing, Okay. So, halimbawa, uh, the process is, is executing at this point. Okay? And then suddenly, the operating system realized that, okay, I can move that process to a different location in memory. Let's say it's doing some uh, maintenance uh, activities in the memory. Okay? It can decide to move the, uh, this process to a different physical memory location. Okay? It can do that by just altering the base register and basically the balance registers also. Okay? So that's uh, how dynamic relocation works. Okay. Ah, okay, so I think this is uh, an illustration. So, uh, <laughs> so I just missed it. I missed this. So uh, you get the idea here. So this is the instruction. Fetch 128. So this is the 32 KB, which is the base, and you add 128, and this is the actual memory location in the physical memory, okay? And uh, for the loading of uh, uh, the value of 3000, so 32 KB plus 15 KB, that will be 47 KB, which is this one. Okay? So I failed. Dito pala yun, okay? Now there are two ways to look at uh, there are two ways to look at the bounds register. So, there are two main registers required for dynamic memory allocation, uh, relocation. The first is the base register and the bounds register. Now, looking at the bounds register, you can actually view the bounds register either as the size of the address space, okay, which is 16 KB, or the actual physical address of the limit. Okay? So, since pwedeng ang laman ng bounce register ay yung actual physical address na limit or pwedeng yung, uh, yung size niya. So, this one, 16 KB, ito yung uh, size. Ito naman, physical, ad physical address, which is 48 KB. Paano naging 48 KB yan? Kasi 32 plus 16. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, lahat ng address all addresses that will be generated by this process should be within this memory area. Anything outside, any reference outside that is not allowed and an exception will happen. Okay? Okay. So, operating system issues for memory virtualizing. Okay? So, the OS must take action to implement base and bounds approach. You usually do this during boot up, during the start of uh, uh, loading, during the loading of the operating system. It performs some hardware initialization to specify which registers will be used, etc., etc. Three critical junctures uh, when a process is running. Okay, So, whenever a process uh, accesses memory, it has to do some uh, magic when it comes to uh, the memory. Okay? So the, uh, the first uh, scenario is when a process is starting. Okay? So if you want to perform dynamic uh, memory allocation, uh, memory relocation, uh, okay? uh, when a process is start, just starts running, uh, the OS should be able to find uh, space for uh, the address space of the uh, process that you're running. So 
the OS should be able to find this memory area. Right? Of course, it will be the, the availability of uh, memory area for the address space of the process will be determined by the state of the system. If, if the system is full already, then uh, you cannot create uh, 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 additional memory area, memory here. You cannot create that unless you implement what you call uh, virtual memory, uh, secondary memory, paging, okay? demand paging, wherein the data will be stored on the disk such that you have an unlimited, unlimited memory. Even though you only have 8 gig RAM, you can run programs, let's say, uh, with a total memory added space of, let's say, 16 GB because the secondary, is, secondary storage is used as an extension of the main memory. We'll discuss that later. Okay. But for now, when the, the, the role of the operating system is to find a memory area where to place the process and that will become part of the other space. So once the operating system finds that, the process, the field, I said a while ago that the address is usually a pointer to this uh, 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 to this address space. So it will be uh, uh, pointing to that uh, memory allocation that the OS was able to allocate for the process. The next one is when the process is terminated. Right? So when the process is terminated, uh, either uh, forcefully or uh, the process finishes operation, then the operating system should reclaim that uh, area. So, for example, after the execution, after the completion of the process here, then this should be marked as not in use. Right? The operating system should reclaim. Otherwise, it will just be uh, uh, an unused memory area. But the operating system has full control actually. It can do a lot of things and it can clean this up. Okay. Uh, the next, the last one is when a context switch occurs. Okay. So usually you only have, for each processor, you only have uh, one base <laughs> register and one bounce register. So, for example, this is running a single processor. You only have one base register and you only have one bounce register. So, during context switch, right, during the context switch, the information on the base, the contents of the base and the bounce pair should also be uh, stored as part of the context of the process. You get the idea? So, whenever you perform a context switch, all context information should be Save and since we are using virtual memory, uh, we are virtualizing memory, and uh, we're using the base and bounds register pair. Right? Then we have to save and store them during context switch. Okay. So, ito na pala eh. So sinamrise na sa di ko lang na. Okay. So, so sige. Let's go over it. So when the process starts running, okay. So uh, usually, how does the operating system do that? Uh, it has, it maintains what you call a free list. Right? It uh, it has a basically a list list which uh, contains information uh, which area in the memory is available, so that when a process is loaded, and then the operating system must allocate a memory, uh, it will look for uh, the free list and allocated. So at this point in time, in, in the figure as shown, how many, how many memory areas are available for use? Free to use. There are two. This one and this one. That's why they are included in the free list. So let's say when I, when I run a new program, the operating system will can select this one, right? And this will be removed from the list and the new process address space will be placed in the physical. Again, this is physical memory. You get the idea? Okay. And then when uh, operating, uh, when the process finishes, okay, as shown here, so process A completed, uh, the free list will be updated and the uh, available uh, memory area, physical memory area will be included in the free list and will be marked as not in the list. Okay. 
Okay? Then. So when context switching occurs, so as I mentioned already, so nandito pala yung discussion, okay? So so you have process A running here. And then you have process B here. So you only have one processor and during the context switch, uh, you have to uh, save uh, I said a while ago that you only have one base and one bounce as per processor, right? So you have to save this for process A in the context of A and then update that to point to the base of B when process B is currently running. You get the idea? And this is the process control block and you have to store that in the, uh, as a field usually in the uh, process control block. Okay? Are there questions? about uh, that. So, the essence of uh, relocation is that simply that uh, yung programmer view or process view ng memory is different from the physical memory and the operating system does that transparently na hindi na mamalaya ng, ano, ng, ng process ng programmer na meron palang ganun ng nangyayari. Okay, get the idea? So, yun yung isang kagandahan ng operating system. Kung programmer ka lang, kung walang operating system, diretso kang nagpo-program sa machine, kailangan mo pag-isipin yung mga ganong bagay. Pero, halimbawa, embedded systems developer ka. Sa embedded systems developer, usually, yung wala nang concept ng ano eh, wala nang concept ng virtual memory sa ka-physical memory. Diretso mo nang ina-access yung physical memory. Kasi, limited lang yung resource mo eh. Tapos usually isang application lang ang ginagamit sa embedded system, di ba? So usually ano na yan, uh, kumbaga diretso mo nang ginagamit, okay? So the next topic about uh, virtualization of memory is called segmentation. So segmentation, uh, okay? In the previous chapter, we talked about the base and bounce approach. Okay? The assumption of that uh, technique is that the entire address space for a per used by a process is contiguous uh, in a contiguous area. Mga magkakasama sila, right? So uh, a main problem with that is, so you have this process, you allocated 16k, and ito lang yung naman niya. And you see here that there is a lot of extra space between the heap and the stack. Okay? This is called internal uh, fragmentation. Okay? So there's a big chunk of free space and it's hard to run when an address space does not fit into physical memory. Okay? So the idea here is this 16 kilobyte chunk of memory should be contiguous, right? Contiguous from 0 to 16 kilobytes, right? So there's a problem with that because what if, what if uh, there is no 16 kilobyte chunk to accommodate this one, right? this big, uh, this, uh, this requirement, right? So that will be a problem, right? So it's hard to run when an address space does not fit into physical memory. Okay. So in segmentation, uh, the segment is just a contiguous portion of the uh, of the address space of a particular length. Okay. So para ang sinasabi dito, kasi ito lahat po patungkol sa isang process, magkakasama sila sa isang big chunk. What if hiwa-hiwalayan mo yan into different physical memory? Kasi yung previous chapter natin, lahat sila magkakasama during relocation based and bounce register. Okay? What if we place each logical different segment okay, or code block or block of memory into different parts of physical memory in a way we're doing a base and bounce exist uh, we're associating a base and a bound for each segment so halimbawa program code meron siyang sariling bounds base and bounds heap meron siyang sariling base and bounds 
the stock meron siyang sariling base and bounds. Okay? So, we don't need the entire 16 AD. Okay? So, kung meron sila ng makaliwa, ito yung drone natin. So, meron 2 KB, uh, 6 KB minus 4 KB, that will be uh, 2 KB, diba? So, may 4 KB ka, as it goes 16 KB minus 14 KB, 2 KB din. So, in reality, what this process is using is only 6 KB. Pero if you only use uh, base and bound, you will need to find a chunk of memory which is 16 KB. What if that is not available? We will not be able to run this process. But in reality, you can run this process even though you're just using 6 KB. You have the idea? So that's the idea of uh, segmentation. Right? So you don't place the different logical components necessarily in a contiguous space. Now you get the idea? So you can, using uh, segmentation, what you simply do is for each logical segment, you, uh, you add uh, a base and a uh, size, so base and bounds. Right? So as you can see here, so you have the code, the heat, and uh, the stack grows downwards, and then the heat grows upwards. And you don't need to find a 16 kb chunk of memory. It's the idea of segmentation. And of course, you need to have hardware support for that. Okay. So how do you do the translation? Okay. So, the so, again, you need to convert that. So, parang may lookup table ka lang. May array ka lang. Array of base and, si uh, base and bounds for each different segment. Okay. So you do that uh, in this manner, the translation. Uh, of course, you need to have the base plus the offset, okay? So this is how it's done. For example, uh, let's take a look at the translation for the code segment, okay? So we have the code segment, data segment, heap stack, right? So for the code segment, okay? Uh, the offset of virtual address 100 is 100, okay? So, the code segment starts at virtual address 0 in the address space. So, so 32 KB, okay? 32 KB, okay? Plus 100, this is the physical address. So, the normal translation process, okay? So, this is the code, so 0. To 2KB, that will be the program code. Okay. And if you have uh, this mapping between the code segments and the physical, the virtual address for the code, okay, so it will start at 32KB. Okay. And so you, you see it here. Okay. And then this is the mapping. Okay. So you slide mo lang yan dyan. So malalaman mo na kung saan siya nag okay. 100. It's the idea of segmentation. Uh, for for the heap, for example, for the heap, okay, if you're going to translate the heap okay, uh, to the physical memory, so it says here that the virtual address okay, plus the base is not the correct physical address. Okay. Kasi, uh, bakit nga ba? Okay. So, let's say, parang ipuput mo lang side by side yung, ano, yung address space. So the heap, uh, the allegate dito is 4KB. So the heap, this is the virtual memory, so 4KB. From 4KB, this is KB. Okay. Okay. So the actual value is, uh, hindi siya yung directa. Okay? Hindi siya recta na kung ano yung value niya na 4200, yun na yung gagawin mong offset. Unlike here, same here, similar to this, right? So it's different because you need to do some subtraction kasi yung offset niya na ay nag-start na sa 4 AB, okay? So you need to do some subtraction and basically you'll get uh, 104. So you convert this to bytes for 200 minus 4 AB, 4 to 96 siya tayo. 
104 plus 3490, that will be the actual memory location. Okay, get the idea? So we'll stop here, okay? And uh, next, we'll continue next meeting. For your love later, uh